Hello everybody and welcome to the beach. Um, today what I thought we'd do is shoot and score. The idea being we're going to come down here with a camera, we've got a, a drone, we've got a DSLR, we're going to shoot some pretty pictures of the sea and the beach and things like that, take it home, cut it, make it look a bit moody and then write some music to go with it. Now not only is this fun but also for those of you who are just starting out and you don't actually have you know big movies to work on it's a really viable way of getting some good stuff together for a showreel show people what you can do bring out some sort of some kind of storytelling in your filmmaking and have a bit of a laugh at the same time so let's get cracking Right, job done. Now we'll take our GoPro and our uh, drone footage back to the office, chop it up, make it look lovely, and then write some music. And so the film is made, it is finished. And the lovely Hugh uh, has um, cut a sort of little title sequence here, basically. Let's have a little look at it and you'll see what's going on. Um, come on, open up, where are you going? There we go, right. So let's turn the click off so you so there's one of those aerials going out over the sea. A couple of gulls knocking about, as they do. Uh, it's an aerial looking down. I like that. Uh, and there's the time lapse with the pan. That's very nice. I like that. And then one of these big circular things. What you get with this, it's a bit jumpy at the moment because that's the playback, but you do get this kind of fluid feel to this whole thing, this kind of rolling, moving look at that. So I think whatever we write here needs to have that kind of slight of flowing kind of lyrical kind of minimalistic thing going for it. I love these shots of the sea. Look at the way the, the, the colors within the waves. I think that's really, really nice. Uh, term. So what is this? The thing is, you, you, you're not just writing music to a bit of bit of old picture, are you? Um, you're always doing it to some kind of um, film so there's got to be some plot there's got to be some narrative why are we in this seaside place what are all these waves about <sighs> um so what i decided to do actually here we go oh, i love that shot i think that's fantastic rather than just write to blank blankly to a bit of picture um i started looking at some um novels and some sort of plot outlines and things like that um with which has something to do with this it could it could be a ghost story it could be a murder mystery it could be a kind of happy f kids sort of thing on the beach all of which will require obviously a different uh, music because music as we all know is there principally to do the storytelling and uh so what i thought we'd do is okay how about undertow by joanna nadine um can Billy find the truth? When 16-year-old Billy Paradise inherits her grandmother's house, it's a fairy tale come true. She and her family move from a rented flat in London to start a new life by the sea. <clears throat> Maybe Billy can even find the father she's never met. But moving back to her mum's childhood home uncovers long-buried secrets, and Billy soon discovers that people may die, but the past lives on forever. So there's a dark undertow about all of this. So what we've got, if we say that this is the opening title of that film, OK, do we want something which is cheerful, or do we want something which sounds as though it might have a, a darker undertow, which is going to be, well... Um, what would the director probably say? They don't want a simple, naive, lyrical piece of music. They'll want something which suggests that there is something else which potentially could go on, but we, it needs to be quite subtle because by the very nature of main titles, they're at the beginning of the film. Now, I haven't really played with... I'm not going to turn the click on because um, I'm just going to start with a bit of piano and see how we get on. Quite like that little pattern. So it's not too dark. No. Okay, that's quite good. 
So we start on C minor going to F major, so you've got from minor one to major four. Okay, let's try that again. A lot of the time I will, st to start a project, I'll just sit here doing this. And something else comes in. Change of chord. Going to E flat. Is that too scary? Going from the E flat up to G major. if I just go back up to the F. That's better. I'll tell you what, let's see what... That's too quick, isn't it? So I would always advise... Well, you, know, you write however you like. Um, I would not personally start with a tempo uh, I would always get into the groove of the thing and then work out what the tempo is going to be from that I'm not worrying remotely about hit points or anything else at the moment I'm just trying to get the general do 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 yeah that'll work I mean this is only one idea be a rubbish idea. Lost it. Lost it. Arrgh. Do we believe in this as an idea? I think it's possible. I think it could produce something perfectly decent at the end of the day. I'm just using ADO's uh, emotional piano here, which is a perfectly good uh, starting point for anything. However, it's really easy uh, when doing this kind of film just to get sucked into using piano and cello all the time. <laughs> Honestly, you'd be amazed how often. What happens if I add something to it? That's all right. Why didn't I record that? Because I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Um, is it great? Mm, no, it's all right. It's not great.
It was better last time. What are you, idiot guy? Oh. This is Espressivo Strings from Sony Box. It's the oldest sample in the world, and yet, when it comes to just vamping stuff in, it's lovely. That wasn't as good either, was it? Um, the idea's not bad. Uh, how much more are we putting in here, though? Because there's an argument which says... And then you've got to... You want to make sure that lines up. It hasn't got a tune. It needs some form of tune. Um, and whether I keep using the piano or whether I add something to it, I'm quite fond of adding harp and piano together. It's a bit of a cliche, but. Sometimes it works. Okay, that's going to work, actually. That's okay, it's coming together. You can use, when you're vamping stuff in, when you're just making stuff up, look at this. You can see where the chord changes and things come. This is a mess at the moment, but I'm starting to feel I quite like that. Um, what, though, is the top line? Um, it's not going to be. Uh, cello because you can see how easily cello would fit in there and it would suddenly sound like everything else you've ever heard oh it does sound a bit like it would. Wake up, guy. Get it going. Get your act together. Make it better. Okay. I'm just going to try and find... I've got to come up with a tune for this, which is going to kill me. Ugh. Just go simple, guy. Go simple. If in doubt, go simple. Okay. Watch the timeline. Let it... St give it some room to breathe. Wait.
There's something in there. And if you were doing this as a gig, you do this and you get it a little bit better. And then you set it to one side and you go and have a cup of tea or a walk on the beach and you do the whole thing again and see if you come up with a better idea. Because <clears throat> what the director is going to do is sit down and go, does this fit with the spirit of my film? Is it too depressing from the off? You can have some more shimmery strings in there. You could. I, li I like the way that sort of broadens there. There's a horrible note in the strings there, but that's where the cut. That's where the E flat's got to come in on the cut to that area. It's all right. I'm not. Ah! What's going on? Thank you. It's fine. It's not great. But the thing is, what I hope this might have helped um, show you is it's, it's the process. When you're trying to get into a, um, a film or whatever, you're looking for that idea which is going to work. I had a really good quote from Alexandre Desplat the other day where he writes uh, his demo uh, for a piece of the film and then tries that demo at a number of places in the film. And if it works in a number of different places in the film, then he knows he's on to a winner. That's a really good idea, he says, shaking, shaking his snow globe. Um, and it's exactly right, because what you're looking for when you're doing these initial demos is the spirit of the movie. You're trying to score the whole narrative arc. You're not looking to score the opening titles particularly. You're coming up with an idea which will sustain the whole movie. And um, that's not it. <laughs> Um, okay, it is done. Uh, a couple of things which I've changed. Um, uh, let me just talk, talk you through this. Firstly, I moved the whole thing along one beat, one beat later, and it all just fits perfectly. It just falls nicely on the cart. It doesn't start too early. As you'll see when I play it through, I think it works much better that way. Um, I've filled out the strings a lot. What I've done is I've taken out quite a lot of the big pad espressivo strings. And so we start with a Spitfire a Symphonic Ensemble a Flautanda, which is a lovely, very delicate, non-vibrato patch. Um, I've also added to that some of the Olaf Arnold's um, Evo strings. So it's got uh, a little bit of the... What a, if you want to make a symphonic patch sound smaller... Uh, you add solo strings to it. But also, I really like these because it's got this, the Evo thing. It's got this development, so it sounds much more real. It's really good. Um, I have used the Espressivo um, strings to add the sort of weight and the sort of the breadth as we get, to, you know, to about a third of the way through, as you can see. I've also added um, a legato cello line, which runs um, through that. Quite a lot of the time using an ensemble patch, and then I'll start filling it out with, um, legato lines at the top and the bottom, and then if I get time, I do all the in inside stuff as well. One other, th couple of other things I've done: um, eight dios adagietto uh, dynamic bowings. They're really good. You because it this is a, a a sample which is a two bar, um, a two two bow phrase, so you can hear the bow change halfway through it, and it's got this beautiful swell in the middle. And so I've added that in, and I've also added a sordino version of it at the end. Um, significantly, um, I've changed the harp. I've gone away from the original um, normal. It was all sounding a bit too straight, and it still slightly does. Um, we see what I'd probably like to do is to use more of an, I don't know, more almost of an upright piano sound or something, something less straight and orchestral. But nonetheless, I mean, it, it, that's working. What I have done is I've changed the harp to a Celtic harp. So it's much thinner sound and a bit more distinctive. I gave up on that tune, on the um, clarinet tune. I thought it was pants. And actually, the more I w watched this, the more I thought, actually, it doesn't really need it. So we'll stick without. I still think I would want to add something else in there which has a more distinctive element to it. You know, an ethnic instrument or something bit of hurdy-gurdy um, or some 
some kind of nay flute, anything, just something to give it a bit more of an edge, because uh, it does sound a bit straight at the moment, but I think it sounds perfectly nice. So let us now have a performance from top to bottom of Undertow. and how that fits better, doesn't it? Now it's a beat later. So there you go. I mean, I, I think it's turned out all right. It's turned out fine. Um, and if you know, if you think it took us an hour to film in the morning with a little drone, and uh, it took Hugh a couple of hours to cut it, and it's taken another hour, and a, you know, it's taken an hour and a half probably to write some music to go with it, and we got something nice and new and interesting. And even if it, you know, it's not the greatest piece of music in the whole world, but it's. It's an, you know, there's little elements in there where I may revisit later and all the rest of it, which I think, oh, that worked out pretty well. I'll, you know, try that again somewhere else. Just get your head around how how subtle differences in chord movement and things like that make something sound interesting as opposed to boring, make something sound suspenseful and sad as opposed to uplifting. And you've really got to nail that because it's more than anything else with the storytelling side of the writing of music, it's understanding the m micro detail of the implications harmonically, melodically, and you know textually of what you're doing, so that you're in charge of that. So, if it just the director says, it just sounds a bit sad, you know why, and you can fix it. And that's the kind of thing which <clears throat> we uh, do with our master students quite a lot. Um, trying to get on top of that kind of feeling but it takes a lot of time and uh, if you want to get into all this if you find <clears throat> this whole thing fascinating whether or not you want to make a living doing it because you know anybody can as I say go out and make a little film like this and do uh, a bit of music and make it fun and anybody can have a snow globe on the desk which is equally lovely um, but it is very satisfying anybody could do this you don't have to be making a living doing it it's just very rewarding um, way to pass time. You don't need even very particularly complicated kit. If you want to learn more about this, then just click the link uh, underneath this little video and we'll um, send you a guide on how to get started. And, you know, simple as that, really. There's no more to it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed um, this little wander on the beach with uh, me and Hugh and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>